uh, opening I ought to have on the camera. Yeah, what? There's a foot coming down. There he is. Yeah. There's a foot coming down the steps. Okay, Neil, we can see you coming down the ladder now. So there's a foot on the moon, stepping down on the moon. If he's testing that first step, he must be stepping down on the moon at this point. Ten. Uh, Buzz, this is Houston, F2, I'm at the one one sixtieth second for shadow photography on the sequence camera. Okay. I'm uh, at the foot of the ladder. The lamb foot beds are only uh, uh, depressed in the surface about uh, one or two inches, uh, although the surface appears to be uh, very, very fine-grained as you get close to it. It's almost like a powder. Ground mass uh, is very fine. Boy, look at those pictures. Wow. It's a little shadowy, but uh, he said he expected that in the shadow of the lunar module. Armstrong is on the moon. Yeah, Neil Armstrong, 38-year-old American, standing on the surface of the moon on this July 20th, 1969. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Yeah, I think that was Neil's quote. I didn't understand it. <laughs> no, one small step for man, but I didn't get the second phrase. Some one of our monitors here at our space headquarters is able to hear that. We'd like to know what it was. This is fine and powdery. I can, I can pick it up loosely with my toe. It does adhere in fine layers, uh, like uh, powdered charcoal, to the uh, to the and inside of my boots. His quote was, in, uh, that's one small step small for man, man one giant leap within. for mankind. I can't see the footprints of my uh, boots and the treads in the fine sandy particles. Neil, this is Houston, we're copying. Oh, thank you, television, for letting us watch this one. <laughs> Isn't this something? 240 miles, 1,000 miles out um, there in the moon, and we're seeing this history being made. There seems to be made. no difficulty in moving around as, as we suspect that it, uh, it's even perhaps easier than the simulations of 16G that uh, we performed uh, in various simulations on the ground. Absolutely no trouble to uh, walk around. See, that's good news. Okay, the uh, engine did not leave a crater of any size. It uh, has about one foot clearance on the ground. We're uh, essentially on a very level place here. Uh, I can see uh, some evidence of, uh, of rays emanating from the descent engine, but uh, very insignificant amount. Hmm. To hurry up and fix that simulation. Yeah. <laughs> now we're getting a negative picture back. Uh, Switch to negative uh, polarity. Okay, are we ready to uh, bring down the camera? I'm all ready. I think it's. Uh, Two miles squared away in good shape. Okay. That's uh, Armstrong. Okay, you'll have to pay out all the LEC. It looks like it's coming out nice and evenly. That's the uh, lunar okay, equipment uh, conveyor, that tether line. It's dark here in the shadow and a little hard for me to see that I have good footing. Uh, I'll work my way over into the sunlight here without looking directly into the sun. 
I don't know where in the Houston converter or where this uh, picture has gone, the negative polarity, but we hope we get it fixed shortly. At least we can make out the figure of uh, Neil Armstrong there. Unofficial time on the first step, 109.2420. said this is a uh, this is like a clothesline it's going to bring down a sequence camera now for pictures and then uh, a little uh, later on in this looking up at the lamp uh, I'm standing directly in the shadow now looking up at uh, both in the windows and uh, I can see everything quite clearly the light is uh, sufficiently uh, Backlighted into the front of the lamp, but everything is very clearly visible. So, man's first words, Neil Armstrong's first words, foot, setting foot on the moon, were okay, I'm be changing it, that's uh, one small okay. step for man, okay. one giant leap for mankind. He found the bottom step of the ladder uh, slightly awry, but says it gives no difficulty in climbing back up uh, to the lunar module when they complete this walk. He's found the surface far more powdery than they had anticipated. He's sinking in by about an eighth of an inch. You see his footprints in the fine particles, lunar dust adhering to his boot. No difficulty in moving around, easier than the simulations on Earth. He has uh, about 25 minutes of activity here alone on the moon's surface, uh, testing uh, the environment, moving around like this, taking a good look at the uh, lunar module, which he's given us a check on. Seems to be in good shape. Very little scoring of the moon's surface by the uh, descent propulsion system engine. Uh, the pads uh, settled uh, nicely, but not very deeply into this fine powdery sand, or fine powdery surface of the uh, moon. Apparently it's in good position for the, to provide the platform for takeoff, or we have heard something about that by now from him. The surgeon says that the camera installed on the ICU bracket. Surgeon says the crew is doing well. Data is good, crew is doing well. And I'm still in the LEC on the secondary strut. That would seem to indicate that they're not overexerting, I gather. Uh, That's good news. They're not That's using right. too much oxygen, or they're not uh, big like too much heat for the cooling system. Another one of our concerns erased, uh, the fact that there isn't that much work, uh, they're not stressing. I'll step out and take some of my first pictures here. He's got a the Hasselblad camera with him now. I think that's the one that was lowered to him for still pictures. It's not the sequence camera, which I believe stays in the lunar module. Uh, uh, Roger, Neil, we're reading you loud and clear. Let's we'll see you get some pictures and uh, the contingency sample. I think that the flight plan actually called for him to take uh, the contingency sample first and then the pictures. Uh, uh, as I recall, all my reading of the plan up to now, the contingency sample went first. 35 and a half minutes of PLSS time expended now. He's confirmed too that they're on a very level place there which is good, and was partly because of his own skill in making that manual landing after it looked like they were coming down in a very rough area. You know, it may be that Neil elected not to uh, gather up a contingency sample because he feels there's no contingency here. He's, he's <laughs> showing great confidence that they'll do everything they intend to do. Uh, it, uh, very uh, well, well could be. Mrs. Houston, uh, do you copy about the contingency sample, over? 
Well, he kind of twisted the uh, order around a little bit. Uh, you, you may be right, uh, Wally, as to what's in his mind, because uh, the contingency sample really is superfluous if they go on with the rest of the uh, walk and get the uh, full samples, uh, the 100 pounds or so of rock, and the documented samples yes. of, of rock, in which they identify rock by rock, where they got it, and picture where they got it, and all that sort of thing. Although Newell's kind of shaking his head there about that. <laughs> I think Newell Trask wants that contingency sample first, just like I said in the flight plan. <laughs> well, to be sure he gets that pocket full of uh, surface rock. Make sure we get something. Right. I have an idea we're going to get everything we want. I wouldn't this be surprised. Is, uh, it's just going so beautifully. The moving around and the exertion that they're showing in doing that, or that Neil's showing so far, is, of course, the great thing that they've learned already. And okay, you're going to get the contingency sample there. Now Aldrin's been okay, bugging him good. for it. <laughs> the man is going to get tired of those kibitzers in a minute and get them up to the <laughs> contingency <laughs> sample just to quiet them. Nag, nag, nag. He stepped out of the field of view. I wonder what he's up to now. <laughs> He's got this little, uh, this little sort of bag on a sharp rim that he's uh, dragging with uh, along with an extension handle across the surface. And he's finding, uh, as he reports there, that it's hard to get oh, it to dig in. Radio. It has a stark beauty all its own. It's uh, like much of the high desert of uh, the United States. It's uh, different, but it's very pretty out here. Very pretty. Well, it's the first compliment the moon's that, had. Uh, <laughs> A lot of the uh, rock samples out here, the hard rock samples, have what appear to be vesicles in the surface. Appear to be what, Noah? Vesicles. Also, I'm looking at one now, oh. it appears to have some Holes. sort of phenocris. Phenocris, typical of volcanic rocks. Houston, Roger. Houston or Roger Neal. 
Okay, I got the camera going at one frame a second. Bounding step. Talk about being super casual. <laughs> yeah. Boy, it looks like fun, doesn't it? It doesn't get too okay. casual. All right, that's got it. Are you ready? All set. I almost thought that was a simulation. He was moving so fast. <laughs> okay, you saw what difficulties I was having. I'll try to watch your flip uh, from underneath here. Aldrin about to emerge, apparently, from the spacecraft. And uh, Armstrong's going to try to help guide him from below. So he'd watch his place, his portable life support system, as he climbs right, up so he doesn't hit the top of the hatch. Five minutes out of a total of Neil, four Mr. hours. Houston, based real. on your camera transfer with the LEC, do you foresee any difficulties in SRC transfer over? Negative. SRC is a sample rock container that uh, the, the box. That's the sample return containers, the rock boxes that Capcom. Now I want to uh, back up and partially close the hatch. In case anybody comes by, they want the door closed. <laughs> <laughs> this camera angle makes those steps look like they're vastly higher than they really Making are. Making sure not to lock it on my way out. Particularly <laughs> 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 good thought. <laughs> what do you say? I'll uh, make sure not to lock it. <laughs> okay, I'm on the top step and I can look down over the RCU and find the gear pad. That's a very simple matter to hop down from one step to the next. <coughs> there he comes. Yes, I thought it would be very comfortable and, uh, and walking is also very comfortable. You... But you're on, you've got three more steps and then a long one. <laughs> Watch that last step. <laughs> I guess he expected that strut 
to compact a little bit more, but as a result, it's a long step from okay, there. Okay, I'm going to leave that one foot up there. And, uh, both hands down about the fourth rung up. There you go. Welcome home. And now we okay, have now two Americans on the moon. Oh. A little more. And another inch. There you got it. That's a good step. Yep. About a, a three-footer. Three-foot first step <laughs> with one-sixth gravity, and look at that. It's like being on a... Beautiful, beautiful. Isn't that something? <laughs> Magnificent sight out here. Okay, Captain, desolation. Like walking on a trampoline. Oh, my. Aldrin's first word. DLSS is nominal. Beautiful view. Consumables. Looks like the um, secondary strut. Uh, a little thermal effects on it right here, Neil. Yeah, I, I noticed that. That seems to be the, the worst, although similar effects are on uh, all around. Yeah, and it bounces and then 